Hello friends and welcome to a slightly different video. Today's video is all about books, but mainly about how I got back into reading after years of not picking up a book for pleasure. As I just hit my reading goal of 50 books this year, I was reminded of how far I have come in the last few years on my journey, reconnecting with my love of stories. As a child, I was a bookworm, but as I went through school and then higher education and university, I really let my love of books slip away and focused solely on the material I had to read for my assessments and projects. During the COVID pandemic, I found myself wanting to spend time away from a screen and coupled with spending so much more time alone, I began to think back to how I'd entertained myself when I was younger. One of those answers, of course, was reading. So I set myself a New Year's resolution to read 10 books and just a couple of years later, my love of reading books and stories is burning brighter than ever. If you're watching this video, you too are probably curious as to how you can re-inspire your love of books. So today I'd like to share with you some tips and some reminders that helped me on my own journey. The first tip I would like to give you if you are looking to re-spark your love of reading and of books is to revisit books and stories that you loved as a child. Starting with some short, easy, some familiar prose can be really, really helpful and it's a really light-hearted and just easy-going and kind of carefree way to reintroduce yourself to it. I think they especially make really nice kind of bedtime stories or first thing in the morning so it's easy to slip it into your day and not too taxing on your mind either. For example, when I first started my journey back into reading, I started with some childhood favourites of The Little House on the Prairie series, Heidi and books by C.S. Lewis. The next one is something that I cannot reiterate enough and that is to read what you like explore different genres and writers and read what actually engages you. I think sometimes we get this idea of reading as a really super intellectual, productive pastime and hobby and so a lot of us, if we are wanting to read again, might want to start with classics or really quite challenging reads. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's something that you feel fulfilled by, but it's definitely not something that you should feel pressured into beginning with if it doesn't actually interest you. Get recommendations from people that you trust, from friends and family, people that know you. Even getting recommendations from creators or your local librarians can be a really good place to start if you're not sure what you enjoy. But start off just reading stuff that is fun and engaging and inspiring and once you get comfortable with that you can then decide if you would like to move on to more challenging reads. Find a format that works for you. It's important to note that traditional print is not the only way that you can consume books and that you can reintroduce reading into your daily routine and your daily life. I think we hold a very kind of romanticised view of reading, you know, having this beautiful hardback or paperback book and reading in a coffee shop or in a library or just somewhere that feels really beautiful. But if that picture doesn't actually work and integrate with your life and your lifestyle, there's just no point. At the end of the day books are stories and you want to be able to connect with those stories or the information that they hold. So if you are struggling to find time to pick up an actual physical book it might be worth looking into audiobooks or digital ebooks if that would suit you better. Kind of following on from that is I think important to acknowledge the financial aspect of books and reading. If you are buying your books new from a bookshop it can be a really quite expensive hobby and it can add up really, really quickly and it can feel quite overwhelming and burdensome. However, it doesn't have to be. 
borrow from friends and family, borrow from your local library. There are loads of different ways around this. Most of the books I read are bought from secondhand shops, whether that is a charity shop or a jumble sale or a car boot sale. But I also get lots and lots of my books from the library and I borrow all of my audiobooks from an app called Borrowbox, which is linked up with my local library. And that is a way that I get to engage with books really regularly and don't actually have to fork out much money at all, if any. So I know cost of living crisis is hitting us all quite hard at the moment. And if books are just something that you can't factor into your budget right now, go to your local library, sign up for a library card and borrow all the books that you want to your heart's content for free. This is also just a library plug, please use them. They are so vital to the community and to keeping reading and books alive. So please go to your local library and get a library card if you are interested in reading. I think one of the absolute most common excuses I hear for people who want to get back into reading but haven't done yet is the I just don't have time excuse, which I'm telling you now, is not true. If you really want to get into reading, you will make time. Just like if you really wanted to watch a new series of TV that you were really looking forward to, you would make time. For me, when I started getting back into reading, I was reading for half an hour before I went to sleep. This was a really manageable time for me personally, but I know people that read for 10 or 15 minutes at first. I now do a lot of my daily reading on my lunch breaks at work. I get between half an hour to an hour's worth of reading done at work. And I also tend to listen to audiobooks on my commute to and from work as well. So that is at least an hour and a half reading that I can fit into my day if I'm going to work, which would otherwise be spent either doom scrolling or looking at random things on my phone or maybe just staring off into space <laughs> and it just means that I'm using my time more effectively and more in line with what I want to be doing personally. It doesn't mean that every time I go and run errands and go for a walk that I'm plugged into an audiobook, I think it's important to take breaks and take in your surroundings, but as well if you are someone that gets easily overloaded by sensory things around you like myself, I personally find that having an audiobook to focus on is a way that I can both integrate reading into my day and also not get overwhelmed with my daily tasks. My next tip is to set realistic goals. The year I decided I wanted to commit to reading more frequently, my goal for the whole year was to read 10 books. To some people that sounds maybe like quite a lot and to others that is absolutely nothing. But to me it was a really big deal and it was something that I felt I could achieve. Now I managed to surpass that goal and I believe that that year I read 15 books. As I picked up my pace of reading and it began to become more normal to me and something that I really looked for to doing. But it was really important to set a goal that I knew was a little bit of a challenge but that I could achieve. If I had set out on my first year with the intention to read 50 books, I think I would have felt really overwhelmed and really disheartened when I just wasn't reaching those goals. Today and three years later I've set my target for 50 books and I have hit it. And I knew at the beginning of the year that 50 books would be a challenge but one that I thought I was really able to do. It's finding that fine line between something that feels a little bit of a challenge and something to keep you going but not something that is so overwhelming that it just makes you not want to pick up a book in the first place. Or it may be that you don't like the idea of setting a goal. Sometimes having quite a prescriptive idea of what you want to read and how much you want to read can also feel quite daunting. So use your best judgment, you know yourself and you know what you respond to best. Following on from that is just a final reminder that I would like to give you. And that is that reading is not a competition. This is something that you set out to do for yourself. It is not something that you are doing for other people and for other people's praise and satisfaction. You know, this isn't a class, this is for you. <laughs> Whether you don't think you're reading the right kind of books, whatever that may be, if you're feeling a little bit downhearted or that your goal feels small or insignificant, just remember, don't compare yourself to what other people are doing and reading. And that whether you read two books or 200 books this year, you are doing really, really wonderfully. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope these tips might help some of you out there. And if you are just getting back into reading or if you have read for a long time, 
please leave your own wisdom in the comment section below because there are so many things I'm sure that I have missed or just not thought of and that I think we could all really appreciate and learn from. Once again, thank you so much for being here today, friend. If you would like to see more content from me in the future, there is a subscribe button around here somewhere and I would love to see you back here again. Take care and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye.